Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and my guest today comes from our neighbors from Guam, and it is Gillette Leon Guerrero, a publisher, and in fact, the publisher of a new book called A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. Gillette, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. When was the last time you were in Saipan? Uh, the last time I was in Saipan was for the, Mike, the Marianas History Conference, the first Oh, that, that was, was like four years four ago? Four years ago. Oh, I welcome just, back. Yes. I should come more often. <laughs> well, a- after looking at your um, bio online and all the things you're involved in, I just want to let you know if you ever do come back, you're already invited to come back to our show. <laughs> Thank you. But we're here today to talk about your latest project and some of the things you've done in the past. Uh, this book, what is this book all about? Well, this book is uh, actually the journal of William Edwin Safford, who was um, technically the assistant to Governor Leary, uh, the first American governor of Guam. Okay. And um, he really functioned more like the governor because Leary uh, was, I, I think I can say, was not really a friend of the Chamorros. Ah. Yeah. He stayed on his ship um didn't want to live in on the island until the palace was to his liking and Safford uh spoke Spanish uh had been uh to the islands in the Pacific and in South America so he had more of a sensibility of knowing what life was like on Guam and he he lived in he bought a house in the Ganya and he uh lived and became part of the community how do we find out about this gentleman, Saffer? Did he write a journal yes, or this was something written about him? Yeah, well, this is his journal. Um, uh, it was a year on the island of Guam, and he wrote it um, as as he was living here. So he mentions people, he mentions uh, events, um, all of the issues that he had to address, changing from the American, from the, uh, sorry, from the Spanish to the American uh, system. Was he only on Guam for a year, or is this kind of like a snapshot of his time there? No, he was only here for a year, and it's amazing wow. what he accomplished in one year. It's just amazing. And um, for the rest of his life, after he left Guam, he was a, a, a staunch supporter of the Chamorro people. Well, it, I, the subtitle here, at least on your flyer, says, Extracts from the Notebook of Naturalist William Edwin Safford. A naturalist, I would have thought, would have studied, like, birds, animals. Botany, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. He was, well, he, he was actually a Navy lieutenant. Okay. okay. So he, was, he became as the aide, as a Navy lieutenant, but he was a botanist. And after he left Guam, I think a year later, he became a botanist with the, uh, an economist with the uh, Department of Agriculture. But um, he was really a Renaissance man. He uh, spoke many languages. He was a botanist. He was an ethnographer. He wrote about the people. He was a linguist. So he uh, actually published the first uh, Chamorro English grammar. Wow. Uh, he also wrote a book, a survey of all the um, plants and animals on the island when he arrived. So, he, you know, he had all this abundance of knowledge, you know. <laughs> How did it, I mean, there's so many interesting records that are out there that could be highlighted. How did you come across his work, and what made you decide to put your time and energy and resources into it? Well, this has been a long a process that has, you know, I first read uh, his work in the 1980s. It's been that, that long ago. And, I've, and I think scholars and researchers are aware of his journal, but it hasn't been published. So... Uh, Judy Flores, a local uh, artist in Guam, and I have been talking about it for years. She um, actually illustrated, uh, s- created 16 illustrations, or uh, boutiques really, uh, for the book, which are included f- from, because she really is a firm believer in this project too. And it's just taken a long time to, 
to come to fruition? Well, the good news is it is actually, well, shall we say it was a difficult process making it happen? I yes. don't know. But there's something unique about how this book came to um, realization or is about to come to realization. Um, and you found a clever way to get funding for it. Tell us about oh, that. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that was the problem is I had, um, th- you know, I had done the research. I had uh, pulled it all together, but I didn't have enough money to print it, to pay for the printing. That's the largest cost for when you're publishing books. And if you, and a lot of grants that you can apply for do not cover publishing. So um, I thought, well, let me try this Kickstarter so I launched the Kickstarter campaign and thought, okay, well, let me give it a try. <laughs> and I launched it, and it's, it's a lot of work, too, but it's uh, sh- condensed into, like, 30 days. Or you set your deadline, but they suggest no longer than 30 days. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to try and raise $15,000 in 30 days to print, you know, X amount of books. And in 15 days, I had raised $15,000. And so for the other, um, the rest of the time, um, I was able to eventually raise 20000 over $20,000. Wow. And so I was able to increase the number of uh, books that will be printed. Now, do you have an idea of who <coughs> your supporters are? Like oh. where they're from? Or Yes, I do. It's very interesting, too, because... Um, they're from all of, of course, most of them are from Guam, and most of them are individuals, but I was able to get um, some businesses on Guam that, that came on board. Can I mention them? Sure. Yeah, uh, Docomo Pacific was my largest uh, donor, and Bank of Guam came on, and um, Mobile Oil came on, and um, Calvo's Insurance, and then some other smaller, Gemcal Corporation and uh, LMS. Guam, which is a landscaping company. So they came on. But the majority of the donors were individuals. And that is what really uh, surprised me, was that there's a need out there for books like this about our history, you know, about the history of the Chamorros, about Guam and the, the Northern Marianas. So they they um, donated uh Actually, I got some from Saipan, too. I got two, I think, two two donors from Saipan. And then the others are from uh, Thailand, Japan, Israel, the United Kingdom, Manila, and Spain. Wow. So it's amazing. I just didn't expect that. So how many books are going to be published? When is it coming out? And how do you plan to distribute it? Okay, so uh, the books should be uh, hopefully here by the end of this month. They're being printed right now in Hong Kong. Um, and we have a book launch planned for the 9th of November at the Guam Museum, which will have been opened about a week. <laughs> so you so might be the first book launch at the museum? I think I will definitely be the first book launch <laughs> at, okay. the, at the museum. So that's kind of exciting uh, in itself. Although it's a little more work than I had planned. <laughs> <laughs> and then where where will you b- are you going to sell your books on Guam? Or are you planning on giving them to schools? Or what are you going to yeah, do? Yeah. Well, what's going to happen is we have some of the sponsors that came on board as uh, we have an uh, educational sponsorship. So Mobile Oil and there are some other companies that might come on board. They're purchasing books to be donated to uh, schools, libraries, nonprofits um, of their choosing. So we have a list of the of the schools and the organizations and so they'll be donated Guamology which is my company will also donate a certain amount of books to to those entities as well uh, they will be for sale at uh, the bookstores in Guam and then also online at uh, our, from our, our online store so you said this book was kind of a, a passion project of yes. yours. Tell us about this guy, William Edwin Safford, from your readings <coughs> of his journal and your research. What kind of person was he? Oh, okay, put it this way. If I could go back in time and I could meet one person, I would like to meet him. Really? Yes, I would. Because he was, uh, from his writing, uh, you can tell he was a very compassionate, learned man that really cared about uh, the people. And I just read something in an article somewhere that said, um, they were talking about Safford and uh, because of he, he was, was a botanist. And uh, so he w- they, they sa- stated that he was interested in 
the people within the landscape, whereas botanists t tend to be interested in the landscape, right. in the nature. But he was interested in how the people, you know, how how they work together. So he was that type of a person. He became very close friends with Padre Palomo. So uh, that was in the other local leaders, and he writes about that in the book. So you can read about these people, and I even was able to find copies of letters from Padre Palomo to Safford wow. uh, because he was one of his informants for doing the Chamorro grammar. So he learned he learned Chamorro from um, uh, uh, Don Torres and uh, Padre Palomo and wrote the grammar from that. And uh, but he also taught English, so he he was a very um, generous man with his time Knowledge. and talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, he opened his home at n in the evenings to teach English to not only the Chamorros but to the the military, the the soldiers that were here. There were Marines that were here, and a lot of the musicians I think were different ethnicities, and so he taught English. He helped people. He had a hard time. I think he says uh, one of the hardest things for him to do was he was appointed to be a judge. And that was like so against <laughs> his personality. To, right? yeah. How could he do that? How could he make things right by still being compassionate? Yeah. And so he, you know. Uh, what Do you have like a favorite story or a favorite entry or two? Mm. Um, one of the entries... Well, uh, there's a lot. There's actually a lot. Let me think. What I wish people could see the look on your face <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're <laughs> almost glowing talking about this uh, book and this person. He, um, yeah. Well, one of the entries is, is he talks about, one of my favorites, is he talks about, uh, he took these trips around the island. So he'd have uh, his uh, uh, staff or someone lead him, you know, around to visit places. And they came upon this one... Um, ranch and uh, Judy actually I asked her to do uh, a painting for that particular story it's I don't think I have any pictures in no it's not in here but um, it's uh, a, a ranch that he describes it's well cared for and um, you know chickens and it's it's beautiful and a young boy comes out and, and, and talks to him and uh, he finds out that both of his pa his parents are blind, but yet they're still they're working together. The young son has taken you know has has m done a lot of the work, but the the mother is weaving mm -hmm. in the house, and the father is also blind, but is uh, still able to function. And it's you know he he makes it look like wow this is utopia <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, it just it's just a picture that. Um, you know, maybe I'm a romantic. I am a romantic. I am, you know. <laughs> and so, and I think that Safford probably was too. So when, because when he describes this, it's just a beautiful scene that you think of. That's one of the favorite ones. Well, you mentioned that Judy Flores mm -hmm. did some illustrations yes. for the book. And I have to say that when I look at the cover, her, her, um, picture there mm -hmm. actually really jumps out. And it actually mm -hmm. makes me interested in her as an artist because, uh, the detail and the color mm -hmm. and the way her composition mm -hmm. is, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, people in the Northern Marianas, after your book launching mm -hmm. on November 9th, uh -huh. how would they, what would be the best way for them to uh, be able to read this book? Um, they could, well, I actually have, um, there is an e-book version that I actually did. I didn't talk about that. Go ahead. I did that one first. And um, spent a lot of resources on getting that done. And it actually has a little more, more information than the print version. But what I found out is it doesn't sell. Um, and after talking to the university press, they said they did a survey. And people on Guam prefer hard copy books rather than e-books. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do too, <laughs> but you know, I thought I was trying to stay ahead of the curve. You know right. what I mean? This is be be modern, so yeah. let's do this, and I won't have to worry about the inventory. But it didn't work. So if they want to, they can they can order the the ebook, which you can just download online. But you need to have a good um, internet connection. That's the problem that people have if they have a very slow internet connection because it has a lot of images mm -hmm. in it, so it takes a while to download. Mm -hmm. Or they can. Um, they can go online and um, order it 
and then we can mail it here. Um, who knows, maybe I can come back again and bring some copies. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would love that. <laughs> the name of the book is A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. And we're speaking with the publisher today, Gillette Leon Guerrero. And we'll be back after this break to talk about more of her work that binds us here in the Marianas. Papa Day, this is Eulalia Villagomez of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Thank you and Cesar's Mossy. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Our guest today is Gillette Leon Guerrero. And Gillette, not only are you a publisher with Guamology, mm -hmm. um, yes. but you're also a genealogist. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this line of work? Okay. Well, well, I've always been interested in history. And uh, my mother is from the United States. And she was interested in knowing about her family. So that's what got me started on it. Uh, but... As happens to some people, the genealogy bug bites you, and then you become <laughs> obsessed with it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. And so I started on my mom's side, and then I went to my dad's side, the Leon Guerrero family, which is, you know, it's, it's prolific. <laughs> I mean, there's so many Leon Guerreros as far as um, on Guam, uh, well, in the Marianas, actually. Right. Yeah, yeah. What is it about genealogy that you find fascinating? I find uh, the connections, making connections with people and, and seeing how, how actually diverse we are and just knowing who your, your ancestors are and, and, and um, where you came from. Sometimes it's different than what you think. <laughs> what? Oh, now, now you got me wanting to ask a follow-up question. Well, what is one of the coolest or most unusual or exciting mm. things you've discovered in your own um, family from doing this kind of work? Well, uh, that would not necessarily be on my the, the Chamorro side. That would be on my mom's side. I found that uh, there are some very interesting... Oh, the, one of the big things that I found was that my mom's ancestors go back to the Mayflower. Really? And to, yeah, the American Revolution and Jamestown, which my mother never knew. Unfortunately, she passed away before I was able to find that. But um, that, was, that was the biggest thing, uh, surprise that I had was... And it was a pleasant surprise. It was a pleasant surprise, but uh, because I was never, I was always interested in Chamorro history and Pacific, and then um, when I found that out, I thought, oh, well, maybe I should look into a little bit more of American history, because my, on my mom's side, that goes back before the birth of the nation. You mentioned before we started our show today that your mom was a member of the Daughters of... No, no, she wasn't. I You became, are. Yes. A we <laughs> member of the Daughters of, of the, the Re American, American Revolution. Revolution. And I had to ask you, what was that? So please explain. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a, it's a lineage uh, organization that only uh, people that can prove their lineage to someone that served in the um, American Revolution can, can join. And uh, I was actually a charter member of the, it's interesting, it's called the Mariana Islands Chapter of the Daughters, the National Society for the Daughters of the American Revolution. And um, we, we had to submit three names to the national uh, organization, and then they chose which one we had. So they, we named it the Mariana Islands Chapter. They named it. So what do you do as a member of this organization? It's a... Basically, what we do is we it's a it's a uh, service organization. Oh, so we okay. we did some work. Uh, we mapped out a cemetery. It's a lot of genealogy, uh, uh, kind of. That's what we do. I'm in the process now of uh, at our monthly meetings giving workshops on how to do genealogy. Um, we also help. We give awards for ROTC and uh, students in at the university. The high schools and the, the community college. 
um, what else? We do, w- you know, we do toys for tots, different s- civic volunteer services. You mentioned something <coughs> about mapping cemeteries, and there mm-hmm. was a project you did. What, what Cemetery can it, project? Yeah, can you that explain was, that to us? Yeah, that was, we went, um, that was the Daughters of the American Revolution, and we actually went and we, we selected a small cemetery, and we went out and we mapped it. Where was this? In uh, in Haganya. Oh, yeah. wow. It's just a okay. small, uh, uh, we picked a small one because we're only, like, five active members of the group. <laughs> That's a pretty <laughs> strong chapter. Yes, yeah, very small. <laughs> we have more members, but only five active <laughs> members. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, the cemetery, was it um, Americans buried there, or was Charles it mixed? mixed or? Yeah, it oh, was a pr- okay. it, and it was interesting because it was a Protestant cemetery. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went and we mapped it out with, you know, we... we, we uh, and we recorded all the names, and we took pictures of all of the headstones, and then uh, and then we had it uploaded to um, find a grave. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So that other genealogists that are looking for information can look for the names on find a grave. So, what would you say to people who are interested, or what word, what advice would you give to people who might be interested in studying their own um, family history? I would say. First off, which I didn't do because I got interested in it late, talk to your to your your relatives, to your to your your grandparents if possible, and find out as much as you can. I, I was reading a survey recently that said sixty um, percent of the people, sixty uh, percent of people surveyed felt that the most important thing to pass on to their children was family history, mm. and money and all of those other things came much later. Mm. So I think that uh, there's a lot of value to knowing your family history. And there are other surveys that have been done that show that children that know their family history, have an identity, know who they are, where they came from, do much better in school and in, in life and are able to address challenges better. It's so funny because I would say almost... Um, Every uh, individual who's kind of in this area of work that I've interviewed on the show mm-hmm. has always said, like, talk to your elders, yes. talk to your parents. So it seems to be a very strong yes. message am- mm-hmm. among um, those of us that study history. Yeah. Yes. And there's, uh, we had a, for the uh, Festival of Pacific Arts in Guam, we had a genealogy section. And it was very interesting because several of us that are genealogists got together and we, we held this uh, um, workshop. And what was interesting was that each of us had kind of a special area. There's certain people that are really good at doing oral history. Then there's other people. I have done oral history, but I'm really good at doing the research, you know, sort of validating this information by looking through uh, historical documents, old Spanish documents and things, and validating it. And then there's, you know, so we all sort of had different areas of expertise but we all collaborate together so that's the other thing that I think that is very important for genealogy is to collaborate with others because then it just helps everyone one of the other things you are involved in is research or um, for for example war in the Pacific in Guam Mm -hmm. what is the fascination you have with history I just you know I've I had you know when I, I started to think back I was interested in history from elementary school and then I got my, my degree is in anthropology. So um, it's sort of come full circle, I mm-hmm. guess. I just enjoy, I, I love to envision what it was like, you know, uh, back in the old days. And as I do the research, I learned that it's very different than what you generally think it was. Mm. You know, a lot of us think that everything was perfect and you know it was very romantic the look. ideal that the we should aspire we to sh- yes yeah. yes that we want to go back to living like we were when we were but it was not that you know it, it ju- ne- necessarily wasn't like that do you have any uh, projects that are kind of closer to your heart uh, close to your heart that you really maybe put a lot of effort into or that were really eye-opening well, the one one project uh, it was called Across the Water in Time. Uh, it was a film. Uh, actually, it it culminated in a film, a television special that was put out. But um, the research was because I was um, um, approached by someone I didn't know in California 
to find out if her uh, ancestor was from Guam or Spain. She didn't know anything about Guam or anything. What made her think she might be from Guam or Spain? Uh, well, because she had some uh, census documents that said, some said Spain and some said Guam. Wow. So she approached me online. I didn't know her from anyone. <laughs> and in the end, it's so I- incredible is we found out that we're related because we had our DNA tested. Really? And we are related cousins wow <laughs> and so her ancestor was definitely from guam <laughs> interesting yeah uh-huh. um and then there, there's another story oh no i think it's the same story mm-hmm. this is somehow tied to an individual from hawaii yes uh-huh yeah yes she was from california but her family was from hawaii and uh juan paris uh well they spell their name P-A-R-I-S, like paris france but his name originally was <laughs> was uh demetrio Perez, mm-hmm. P-E-R-E-Z, mm-hmm. uh, from Guam. Uh, and he left Guam around the 1860s. And we're not sure how he left, how, you know, he left on a ship, definitely, but if he was, uh, if he stowed away or if he was hired on as crew, we're, we haven't been able to f- figure that one out. Well, that's so amazing that a random stranger would approach you to do genealogical work and you would find out you were distantly related. Yes, it's amazing. That's <laughs> probably the best. And and so now I have a family in Hawaii. And, you know, I went there and it was really nice because we went to the land, w- you know, where he lived. And it was very, I was so happy to be able to help help them. Well, our guest today is publisher Gillette Leon Guerrero, and her latest book coming out in November is A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. Gillette, any final thoughts before we go? No, oh no I just, uh, I'm just really happy to be here and, and hope to explore my uh, Saipan, <laughs> my, my Mariana Islands uh, uh, connections more, uh, perhaps in a n- another visit, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing about your book. Again, if you'd like to order a copy, it will be on Amazon, you said? Uh, uh, Guamology Inc. Guamology Inc. is the publisher. Dot com. com. Mm -hmm. So um, take a look at it. It looks like a fascinating read. And as you can tell, Gillette thinks this is an excellent person we can learn from from this period of time in Guam. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. (laughs) 